This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Software as a service SaaS platforms are basically dead. Oh no! They're all going to be replaced by micro SaaS platforms that are vibe coded on the fly by companies themselves or by AI agents that you can just deploy for free, almost free, and then let them do all the work for you. Now, this could happen for a specific kind of SaaS that I'll talk about later on. But in general, I don't think it will. Before I talk about why, let's explore this premise that SaaS is dead. I've seen several posts online saying that SaaS is dead. You know, on platforms like LinkedIn, other social platforms, maybe I just shouldn't go on those platforms in the first place, but well, we were, I was doom scrolling and I came across them. Now, where I believe this started with is something that Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft said in a podcast in the beginning of this year. A notion that business applications exist, that's probably where they'll all collapse, right, in the agent era. Because if you think about it, right, they are essentially CRUD databases with a bunch of business logic. The business logic is all going to these agents. His premise is that most SaaS platforms are basically CRUD applications, a database with a bunch of business logic on top of it, and that this all collapses and becomes AI agents. Another discussion is that companies will simply vibe code their own platforms and not use the existing ones. And this is actually already happening, in particular for internal tools. Now, it's clear that over the past months, and years, there have been a lot of changes and improvements in how AI helps us write code. I mean, it's more integrated in our IDEs. For example, VS Code has a great connection with GitHub Copilot. I use that all the time. It can suggest edits. It has a built-in chat interface. It works with your entire code base. And of course, next to VS Code, there are other options such as Cursor, which itself is a fork, VS Code, or Windsurf. And then there have also been a lot of improvements to agents, in particular with the MCP protocol that allows you to directly connect LLMs with various APIs and other systems. And then I'm not even talking about the newer companies, recent companies like uh, Lovable or Replit that allow you to basically just create a fully hosted application just by prompting. So the trend is clear, more coding tasks are going to be simplified or even taken over by AI, more things are going to be done by agents and not by humans. So you might say, well, I mean, and if that's true, in that case, what's the purpose of software as a service in the future? We don't need it anymore, right? Now, on the surface, that may sound reasonable, but when you dive a bit deeper and you look at more specific SaaS solutions, then you'll notice quickly that there's a problem with that line of thinking. Let's take a simple example, a SaaS software as a service that does accounting for your business. Every business needs this. I use this in my own business as well. Now, an accounting system is nothing more than a CRUD application. It's working on a database that stores your invoices, bank statements, transactions, anything. So you could say, well, you know, you could vibe code that yourself, or I don't know, let an AI agent do your bookkeeping for you. So no need for an accounting platform, right? But the problem is that there are rules around how you're supposed to do accounting as a business. An accounting platform needs to follow these rules by law and they're different per country. But here in Europe, we have rules like, or uh, policies like GDPR, there's ISO standards for security, you need to do audits. And on top of that, you also need to couple your accounting system with the bank. Now, a bank is not just going to let some random AI agent or an application that you vibe code yourself to directly connect with their APIs. Plus, a rule in most countries is that an independent accountant needs to check your numbers once a year. At least that's how it is in the Netherlands. And these accountants only support a limited number of platforms. And sometimes they even work just with a single one. Uh, simply put, you always need an established accounting software as a service. And now, will those platforms change, uh, rely more on AI to automate things for you? Absolutely. But that's already been going on for many years. It's nothing new. For example, the accounting platform that I use has some pretty basic rules and system in place to automatically map transactions to bookings and vice versa. So automation is already there. It's not really going to change. Or 
take another example, uh, website design and hosting software as a service. It's more than a CRUD with a database. There's NIS2 compliance. You may need to have an agreement with Econ in order to sell domains to your customers. You need a cloud architecture to actually host the website. It's not something you vibe code in an afternoon or that an AI agent can do for you. But of course, website design and hosting will change. It changes all the time and will rely more on AI in the future. That's what you also see with today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one website platform designed to help you stand out and succeed online. Whether you're just starting out or scaling your business, it gives you everything you need to claim your domain, build a professional site, grow your brand, and get paid all in one place. I've used Squarespace myself to launch websites for my businesses. And as someone who builds software and teaches software design, I really appreciate tools that are thoughtfully designed and just work. It's really easy to get started by using Blueprint AI, which generates a fully custom website based on just a few prompts. There are a ton of templates that all look really good. After that, it's trivial to add sections or change the appearance to your liking. And boom, you have a full professional website. Squarespace comes with integrated SEO tools, so you don't need to worry about optimizing meta descriptions or generating sitemaps. It handles all of that automatically. If you ever try to get a new dev blog or documentation site indexed properly, you know how frustrating that can be. With Squarespace, it's baked in. And with the built-in analytics dashboard, you can track traffic, engagement, and even revenue if you're selling something. Or you can use to figure out what landing pages are working and what needs to be improved. Whether you're building a site to showcase your portfolio or launch a software as a service that you just vibe coded, Squarespace makes it incredibly easy. Head over to squarespace.com slash rmcodes for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use offer code rmcodes to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Now, back to the video. So clearly an accounting service website hosting is not that easy to just vibe code or let it be taken over completely by AI agents. But there are more examples like this. I take a payment provider service like Stripe. That's not something you can just vibe code into existence. You're going to need to make agreements with payment services such as credit card providers, banks, Apple Pay, Klarna, or even services that are country specific such as Ideal in the Netherlands or Mobile Pay in Denmark and Finland. And that assumes that you know what the right prompts are to make AI create something like Stripe. It's just very hard to do. It's easier to just use Stripe. It's all about convenience in the end. Now, will AI be more integrated in Stripe? Absolutely. Stripe already offers an MCP server to access their API. So that's already something that you can use right now. So we'll still use these software as a service platforms that just be slightly different. They'll rely a bit more on AI, they'll offer different types of integrations, but at the core, they still provide a service to you and that will not change. Or a final example, a music software as a service like Spotify or Apple Music. I mean, yeah, you can vibe code a music player. You might even be able to vibe code something that stores an MP3 in the cloud and streams it to a client. But of course, that's not really the core of the service. The core of the service is music. And if you want music, you need to make a deal with a music label. <laughs> and that's not going to happen just like that. We can't do that as individuals. So we're going to need to rely on a service for that. Uh, I'm not even sure how agents fit in here. I mean, we just want to listen to music. Well, maybe we could let an agent listen to music for us. To me, what these examples clearly show is that often the problem that a SaaS solves is not code related. I mean, writing the code is actually the easy part when you think about it. Accounting software solves being able to follow rules and regulations in your specific country and providing a transparent view of the finances of your business to an accountant. Website hosting solves domain registration, making sure that the hardware is there to host your site and that it's fast. Stripe solves payments, connections with banks, credit cards, payment systems, tax compliance, offering a payment flow, etc., etc. And a music service like Spotify solves being able to listen to any music you like without getting fined for copyright violations. Now, all of these things are way more than just the code. And of course, they might each offer integrations with AI systems so that agents can work together with these platforms. I mean, maybe it would be helpful to have an agent 
that can search for music, particular kind of things that you like, or keep an eye for uh, bands or musicians that are close to uh, your interests, so that when they, uh, I don't know, release a new album or something, you get a notification. But you, we don't even need an agent for that. And if you look at what an agent actually is, that's not even that clear. We have the LLM components, right, with the MCP server components, which are basically APIs that an LLM can use. And some other systems that surround that, like uh, scheduling, for example. And of course, that allows us to do lots of very powerful things, but it's not really different from what software as a service companies are already doing. You're still going to need software as a service platforms. They just offer different integrations and might themselves use agents to do certain parts of the work. Another thing to realize is that the chat interface is not something that works for everything. I mean, a graphical user interface is useful. It's, it's not all going to be replaced by chatbots. So all of these tools will exist next to each other, except that with LLMs and agents, we just have a new way of doing things for us. So you'll still use Stripe, Spotify, or any other SaaS, because that's just cheaper and more efficient than trying to vibe code your own payment platform or your own music listening experience. These platforms don't just solve an IT problem. They do much more than that. Now, that being said, there are SaaS platforms out there that solve like a very small, very specific IT thing uh, that are really nothing more than a CRUD application. Uh, for example, a SaaS that connects two APIs so you don't have to write your code yourself or, I don't know, simple internal uh, data dashboard SaaS. I think these type of products, they are going to have a hard time surviving in the next couple of years. And uh, that's also where we see a lot of disruption. I mean, many uh, companies are now starting to use these code generation tools to very quickly build internal tools and dashboards. And that's you know, almost as easy as just using these existing software as a services. So is software as a service dead? I don't believe so. I mean, it's going to change, but as long as you solve a real problem like payment, accounting, vehicle rental, or if your product relies on content that's hard to access without it, Spotify or even YouTube, you still have a reason to exist. And those companies are still going to need engineers to work on those complex products. Now, will the work that engineers do change? Of course it will, but that's nothing new. It's always been like that. We might need less engineers in the future, but we will likely work on way more interesting products. But what do you think? Do you agree with me? How, how do you think we'll be using SaaS platforms in a couple of years? And how do you think AI, LLMs, and um, the integrations that it offers, how, how do you think it's going to affect SaaS platforms? Let me know in the comments. Now, if you are working on a SaaS platform that's dying, and you want to shut it down properly with minimal headaches, Check out this video next, where I share my own experience doing that. Thanks for watching and see you next time.